Welcome everybody to the Ryan the Ride Mechanic channel. I'm Ryan, and today I want to talk about Fury and this erection. Fury's erection of the support pillar. We're going to talk about Fury's support pillar coming in. Now get ready. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, the big news is that uh, the support pillar is going to be coming in any anytime now. Uh, I was cruising around on YouTube and saw Theme Park Predictions place video up there. And really good video. Nice. Uh, a lot of uh, footage around it. Going around looking at the area and seeing everything that's going on. And uh, of course everyone's attention is going to turn to the 500 testing cycles. But I wanted to pump the brakes just slightly say hey just a little bit um yes they have to put those 500 test cycles on it but they have to do a little bit more before they can set all that into place and that's kind of what i wanted to go over real quick just from the mechanical point of view of this video that's all it is i'm not trying to say anything else uh basically what has to happen is that that supports on its way to the park probably right now um, there's a big fence up around the area, understandably so, but that fence is so far back everywhere because A, they don't want anybody near it, and B, they have a crane prepped and ready there to do an erection on that corner, and what's going to happen is that that track is pretty high off the ground. Uh, the area that that crane needs for a safety envelope is typically two to three times the max height of the lift that's going to happen. So if that support pillar is 100 feet high, they need two to 300 feet all the way around the thing roped off so people don't come into it. And that's typically spelt out by the insurance companies. Um, but, you know, you, you have to be really safe with those things because as you're moving those big columns around and stuff like that, things can tip over and happen and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So... Um, the chances of it actually coming in this evening and being put up overnight are probably pretty high. I would guess. Just a guess, that's all it is. Um, because from the park's point of view, the less they have people watching this go on, the better off they are. Even though, you know, it's going to be highly publicized anyway and they're going to have all this stuff going on. They still don't want to do this in the middle of the day because, no, you know, people on this channel and watching this, we all understand what's going on. We know what's happening. It's like, yeah, they're going to replace the column. Great. It's going to be good. They're going to open the ride back up. Awesome. Everyone's going to get to go on that thing. We're going to have fun. We're going to buy popcorn and funnel cakes. It's going to be awesome. Right. But the general public doesn't understand that they see cranes on roller coasters and they get scared. They think the whole park is falling apart. So they don't want to do that. So they're going to try to put it up when the least amount of people are watching, which is overnight, early morning. So what's going to happen? The first thing you have to do is de-stress the column that's there. I think they did a pretty good job of that already. I call it de-stressed. Um, all the column supports are loosened and hopefully don't break one of the anchors going into the pier because if you snap one of those anchors, those anchors go down about 8 to 15 feet into the ground just depending on the size of it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The concrete pier that it's on or the footer, that goes down about 50 feet, 50 to 75 feet down into the ground. Those things go down really far and they have an entire rebar sub... sub uh, straight that goes inside of them and the the hardware i'm talking about is the actual anchor bolts they're typically referred to as j bolts um, they go down um, depending on the size and location of the footer they'll go down either about four feet to like 15 to 20 feet down and they're tied into that rebar structure so that thing is hella supported <laughs> so Hopefully they don't break any of those taken apart, which I'm assuming they won't. And so what they'll do is they'll take that old footer down. They don't really have to do anything to the track. It'll stay right there. They'll grab the new one. Hopefully the new one fits. Ugh. Yeah. I've put up some stuff and you take a brand new <laughs> column and you go, 
you know, like you know, back to the movie when they back to back to the future when the Doc Brown's up on the clock tower and he tries to plug in the cable and he's like, yeah, it, it happens with stuff like that too. Um, I've had footers orientated wrong, clocked in the wrong direction. The bolting pattern is off. It's the wrong height, the wrong length, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's it's been bad. Hopefully, since this has so much attention on it, that none of that stuff happened. And the fact that B and M is doing it, I I assume all that stuff won't even be an issue. But you never know. Um, so they'll take the old one down. And then they'll take the new one, they'll put it right back up in its place. They'll ghost in the bolts first. So they go up there and just put the bolts in really loose, just finger tight, up on the top support structure and down the bottom support structure. Hopefully don't need a bunch more cranes to put things back into place. Hopefully not, because that might have been what got them in this trouble in the first place if that happened. Um, and then what they'll do is they'll set the bottom footer on both sides, the, the one that's vertically straight underneath the thing and the one that's at that, we'll just say a 45 degree angle. They'll set those two, they'll, they'll get their axis right and they'll put all the leveling nuts up tight underneath the footer and then they'll bring the top nuts down on top of it and that will start to tighten that footer down. So at that point, they're ready to start creeping up on torque. And just like everything, there's a bolting pattern. You got to go around all the flanges and torque them in a certain fashion. And you got to do that on that big flange up on top too. And then at that point, we're ready for grout. Now, grout is not necessary to make the thing stable. It's actually those bolts that are holding it. They're doing all the work. The grout is simply just displacing water away from that column. But typically especially in, in something that has high visibility like this, they'll want to put in grout and let it cure. So grout will probably be, they'll probably put it in and it'll take about 10 hours for that grout pack to cure to the point where they can start running it at that point. Um, and then once they start running it, so let's say they probably will start... Um, if they actually get it in tonight slash tomorrow morning, they'll probably start tomorrow night. And uh, the reason why tomorrow night is because what they'll do is to put these 500 cycles on, they will probably, no guarantees, I'm just guessing, they will probably put all their water dummies back in the trains and put as much weight as they can around that track. Because what typically happens with a new track is you assemble all of that, you start load testing and you start running trains around the thing. And then about after about 500 cycles, somewhere around that area, you have to go out and retorque the flanges in those areas. So you have to send the crew back out there with torque wrenches and put the final torque on the assembly just to make sure nothing is shifted in between here and there. They're probably going to have somebody look at it in between. b and is going to be there monitoring. They're going to recheck the stress in the area, that sort of stuff. So I'm guessing if everything goes good, it'll be in, let's say, tonight slash tomorrow morning to run 500 cycles at what? Probably a couple of minutes a cycle. Probably needs another two nights of operation. And that'll put us into the weekend almost and I kind of doubt that they're going to push the thing to get open by the weekend. Um, it sounds fast to me. And by that, I mean doable. Yes, doable. They can run the 500 cycles, say everything is fine and open it up for this weekend. Absolutely doable. Sure. It sounds fast is that there's a lot of people watching this and Opening it straight up might not be the thing that they want to do from the public's point of view. They might want to wait a little bit and continue to test it overnight and stuff like that. And then do an opening early next week. Maybe. I don't know. It depends on how desperate they are to get it open. Can it safely be done for the weekend? Absolutely. Assuming everything lines up and everything goes together good and nothing's wrong. They can do it for the weekend. 
Are they going to? That's completely between them and the governing bodies of those states and whatever they've worked out. I know if it was where I used to work and we said, hey, we want you guys to sign this thing off Friday night or Saturday morning, that state would laugh at us and they'd say, we'll see you Monday morning at 8 a.m. That's when we're going to be there because they are not going to be rushed into making a decision. Now, that was a state I worked for or worked with, I should say, but uh, that's just it. So take the new thing, put it up, put the grout in there, torque it down, let the grout dry, start running cycles on it, retorque the thing. You got to PM the whole thing, of course, and make sure it's all back up and running and then uh, release it. And then assuming everything goes good, possibly by the weekend, maybe early next week, a little better. But anyways, I just wanted to add my two cents in. If you can, go over and look at that video on theme park predictions. They did a really good job of putting everything together there. And uh, check it out. Anyways, Ryan the Ride Mechanic. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. Helps me out. Have a good day. Bye.